Welcome to the Octopod. I'm Kyle Davis, head of the Office of the CTO. Join us as we dive into the latest technologies and trends shaping business. Whether you're a tech enthusiast, a business leader, or just looking to stay ahead in the digital age, this podcast is for you. Let's unlock opportunities with technology together. Let's jump in. Third part of our special series where we've been joined by the experts in the retail sector as we continue our journey on the trends for 2024. Uh, guys, let's um, just introduce everyone for the audience again. So, yeah, hi, David Upson, Global Industry Director for Retail at Intel Corporation. Ian Scott, Independent Retail Consultant, looking at the world of physical retail. Jane Liston, Retail Sales Manager at CDW and heads up our retail strategy. Excellent. So, for those joining the recording remotely, um, hopefully you joined into part one and part two, where we talked about sustainability and security. But in part three, we're going to talk about shrinkage. So Jane, do you want to just, what, what, is our, what do we mean by shrinkage in the retail sector? So shrinkage is that loss that's being made, whether that's through theft or shall we say things disappearing, which still is theft really, it's just generally theft. So shrinkage is a big issue for the retail industry. We, are, we see some really high figures about the impact it's having on operating cost. So it's something that needs addressing, but we've got a really kind of more a cultural shift happening as well where it's very difficult for retailers to enforce some of the theft, that human behaviour in store versus some of the technology that's coming into this space. So we're seeing some really cool technology around visual theft prevention, detecting behaviour, but what happens when that's been identified? So for me, it was just really, I think, today to explore a little bit about, about that shrinkage, that behaviour versus technology and how we can really have impact on these, these operating bottom lines for retailers. Cool. So we can get into the, the technology piece a bit later on in the conversation, but I guess the theme then is, if we can detect it, is what's the impact? And then can we actually make a saving, uh, uh, make a business case for that investment? Because in my simple mind is that if I can detect that someone stole an apple, that's great, but how much value does that one apple have? It might be a problem when, when a thousand people steal a thousand apples, but what's the cost of, of enforcing all them individual points and what, what we see in the, the mindset of retailers in this space? Well, for, for me, what I'm finding fascinating here is it has grown, as Jane has said, uh, and there's a danger that it's almost becoming an acceptable part of business in certain areas. I think in California, in the US, they quote a law, I think they misquote a law about it not being a crime unless it's $800. And the moment that's advertised, people are thinking, well, I can steal $750 worth of stock. And so there's a danger of perpetuating problems. You've had flash mobs, even here in Oxford Street in London, where they agree on social media and they're rampaging around streets. So there's a real issue in that it's becoming more common. And the more common it is, the more it becomes acceptable practice. Um, and, and retailers, I think in the US last year, it was $1.1 billion was an estimated figure. David may have figures that, that will clarify or contradict that, and I will bow to his, more, his superior knowledge in this area. But it's a huge issue, uh, and there's no obvious way of fixing this problem, which is where the challenge really lies. Yeah, uh, there's all sorts of numbers were quoted. I think the National Retail Federation in the US, they quoted a number, and then they revised the number, because I think just in terms of positioning our, our statements here, theft is is huge and it's a huge problem for retail but i think there was some other factors like there's this thing called covid and people weren't buying the right things and they weren't putting them in the right place and they lost track of inventory so what part of the correction of those figures was to clarify what was re really retail theft now it's still in the billions of dollars so back to your return on investment yeah it's an easy calculation it's probably one of the easiest things to convince retailers to do if you can Move the dial on retail theft. It's not very difficult for retailers to justify why they would want to invest in those technologies, which is why you see you have seen them do all sorts of things, both physical and technology. You know, from screens on POS systems that show show your picture back to you, uh, a real visual sign that somebody's maybe watching what you're doing, uh, to new barriers in self checkout lanes, to all sorts of visible security guards in various areas. So there's kind of practical and technology um, approaches that retailers are starting to invest in because it's such a big problem. I think with some of the sort of brands, especially in the US, it's been very interesting. They've gone to such extreme levels to protect the stock. 
to a point where relatively low value um, items in, in one of the large pharmacy stores, it's all locked away. So you have to get a member of staff to unlock it to buy a $5 lip balm. And there's not enough staff to do that. So you're trying to protect the goods, but, but it's not staffed accordingly. So there must be a massive impact on the revenue of those. So how sustainable is that? And how much is that impacting your actual sales? And actually being able to calculate that. Yeah. And actually, do you save more in protecting the stock versus lost sales because the consumer goes somewhere else where it's easy to buy it? Yeah. And, and I think Ian's going to be definitely better talking about this topic than me. But I think we have this challenge of stores have been opening up right? It's all about how do we attract customers, make it easier for them to shop and transact. So self-service being introduced in a more open environment, stuff from behind the counter. You know, everybody talks about this physical barrier between the, the retail staff and the, and the customers. How do we break that down? And now loss prevention started to rear its ugly head. And so how far do you go back to locking down those store environments without destroying that new environment that people want to come into the store and and that, that. so it's kind of getting that balance right in those physical locations is going to be super important for retailers going forward definitely and that 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 cost about sort of measuring the impacts is, is very relevant but you will find it will be different for each category in the same store you know certain things will be high margin high turnover right through to low margin fast turnover or small turnover so the cost of the technology but the impact on sales will be different. So it's not a one size fits all. You may find that your theft goes up 10% if you stick it on accounts, but your sales go up 40%. There's an argument for considering leaving the access and living with the loss. But if you're suddenly finding, you know, your, your, your theft goes up 50% and your sales are increased by 5%, well, maybe there's an issue. And the problem is there is no simple one size fits all answer, even within the same retailer with the same customer in the same shop. Different categories are going to have different ones. So this is one of these really interesting dilemmas because you can't look at it and go, I know what you need to do. You know, we talked about sustainability before. We know where we need to be with that and it's how we help people on the journey. We don't know what the answer for this one is. And that's where it's a real dilemma. So if we don't know the answer, there must be there must be a route or a journey of customers or, or retailers can start to go on because there are technologies that can help in this area. But we're saying that actually it's going to be a multifaceted approach rather than a single you know, silver bullet that fixes the problem. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And and also, it's not, we talked about this in security, it's not a one and done. This Because we're talking about people and behaviours and behaviours change. And whatever you do to put in place to stop a behaviour may just migrate to a different type of behaviour. And if you're not onto that new type of behaviour very quickly, um, then you'll find that you've closed one door and two other doors have opened. So I love the comments about the category, different types of um, goods are going to be impacted in different ways. Maybe the theft of, a, of an Apple is not going to be the same cost as the theft of an Apple computer, <laughs> uh, which is of a different order of magnitude. So uh, how, how do you balance that? And I think also you're looking at that shrinkage within the supply chain as well with how much goes missing from, from production to store or production to restaurant. We've been seeing some really high stats of what's going missing in that supply chain. And I think, you know, technology is there with RFID and with tracking. So being able to identify at what point something went missing, but it doesn't stop the fact that the thefts actually happened at that point. So it's about then how you identify the culprit and the action the business takes. So it's a policy piece as well as a technology piece. I think that's where things like digital twins can start to play yeah. a part there is that if you can model what that supply chain looks like and then... Yes, the RFID tag tells you that the product disappeared at this point, but how do you modify that supply chain to change the behavior, to stop the shrinkage, et cetera? Then that's going to be really important because you only go do this as a physical thing in your supply chain and then find out that it wasn't the right answer because that could cost you more than, again, more than what you were saving potentially. So again, it's a great example where di digital twins and technology can start to drive that, that outcome. Sorry, it's, it's understanding the why as well. Like you say, it's opportunity in the supply chain, maybe. Someone's delivering a load of stuff, they're on the pallet, I'll have one. Um, but even in the retail space, it's understanding as well. One of the worst categories in the US is the baby category. And you need to understand the reasoning here is that you suddenly have new parents who have gone from two of them both earning an income to one of them earning an income of three males to feed, cost of living. And there's almost an inevitability that they're forced into a situation where they're having to make difficult financial decisions. And there are some horror stories about behavior around the baby category where some of that theft can be driven through desperation rather than greed so it's like 
do you become empathetic and approach that differently to the opportunist who's grabbing a high value piece of electronic technology who maybe just wants to sell it on eBay? Um, so it's, it's so complicated. There are so many tiers of analysis, understanding, response, and treatment of the target audience as well. Yeah, that's so important. And, and I think being driven by data is so important in making those decisions, right? So I think you both said it from a supply chain and from a, a driver's perspective. Going on anecdotes to solve this problem is not going to get you very far. And and that's one of the things where you know, some of the digital technologies that we talked a little bit about on this uh, on this podcast, but that's where it can give you that real insight as to what's really happening um, and how those behaviors are changing. We, we've done a lot of work around the self-checkout with quite a few of our partners that are looking at computer vision. And some of the things that people think are happening at self-checkout is not the reality of what really happens at the self-checkout. And so, which shows you that going from anecdotes to data to drive your decisions is going to be so important in this space. And I think especially that data piece where sometimes you find some of the actual processes that are running the business, they're still paper-based. They're still delivery systems where it's a case of delivering six boxes of X. It's something a bit of paper. So it's, you know, and until, until that, that process is all digitized and you've got the actual proper inventory tracking data, you're not getting an accurate baseline. You need the so what as well, because you can gather the data very easily. And then what do you do with it? How you interpret it? Uh, AI can help there. But sometimes good old humans can come in at that point once you've got that insight. And I agree with, with David, you, you can't mass gather data without it manually. It's just not possible. And the ability to observe behavior, capture it, put it in place. But then there's the interpretation. You know, one of my favorite solutions I've ever seen is totally analog, where a waiter is offering free coffee to policemen. So there'll be uniformed policemen in their store drinking the free coffee. And I love that there's a simplicity there to that process. It won't fix all the problems, but there's a physical presence that can act as a deterrent. That has nothing to do with understanding the behaviours and the whys. But it needs that mix, especially in the physical space where human presence is a unique differentiator. How do you utilise it to work with that data to deliver relevant solutions? And that story about Waitrose, that also come, brings into the perspective of, given that you know what's happening, what are you prepared for your employees to do? What's your employee's response to that information? And, you know, there's a couple of instances where retailers have had to, well, have chosen to fire staff because they've responded in the wrong way, either ignoring when they should have intervened or intervening when they shouldn't. Yeah. And, and that duty of care for your employees but also making sure that they're safe um, as well as they're also providing the right information to the people who should be doing the right response. And and some of this, I think, is around recording, providing the evidential trail, um, which can be as important, especially if you want to bring in law enforcement to try and um, solve this problem. Without that evidence to support what you say has happened, it's he says versus they say. And so that's so important damage. That is a fantastic sort of key takeaway for everyone there, isn't it? Have the data, make informed decisions, take the emotion out of the conversation, therefore you can get to the, the root cause uh, as fast as possible. So it'd be great just to get a, a final comment. Um, I think from from your perspective, David, it's to have the data, make informed decisions from that side of it. What do we, what do we mean? It, it comes down to that interpretation of the data, finding the meaningful solutions and applications that suit your environment and your target. And again, I think it does link back to the data, but from CDW's perspective, how we can help you on that journey with identifying that those points where you are vulnerable or it's high loss and how technology used in the right way can help resolve that and, and improve the efficiencies and reduce your loss. Excellent. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. That's clearly a topic where there is massive advantages for technology and people and process to impact this, the shrinkage challenge. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, I've been Rob Sims, Chief Technologist for CDW. Uh, David Dobson, Global Industry Director for Retail at Intel. Ian Scott, Independent Consultant. Jane Liston, Retail Sales Manager at CDW. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Be sure to check out the back catalogue for more great insights. Don't forget to subscribe via your favourite podcast platform so you never miss an episode. We appreciate your support. If you have a topic you want us to cover, feel free to reach out. Catch you next time.